Coming up on this episode, I review Titans Season 1, Fast and the Furious 9, The Director's Cut, and my current progress on Knights of the Old Republic 1 for Android. A. B. N. It's headphones sale! What's up guys and welcome back to another episode of Headphones Neil Reviews. I'm your host as always, Headphones Neil, bringing my review for a couple of different items that I've watched during this week. So I did another recap or multiple recap episode for this week just because um, it's been a busy week at work and I was powering through Titans and then it, as it turns out, um, Fast 9, or the Fast 9 Director's Cut is available for purchase and streaming, so watch that. And then in the middle of all that, playing Knights of the Old Republic 1 on Android, so I thought I would catch everybody up in a nice big review. So with that, I'm going to start it off with my review of Titans Season 1. Um, so overall, I want to say that the season turned out to be a lot better than I had anticipated. So I had previously seen the first episode and I thought it was okay, but I didn't think anything of it. Um, it didn't really make me want to see the, the rest of the season or, in, or see the rest of the season in any particular kind of rush. So. Um, I kind of put it off, and as it turns out, the show is now streaming on HBO Max um, via all three seasons. So I decided I'd watch the show to see how it holds up, especially since Gotham ended on a high note. So um, with that, um, or continuing in the review, so overall I liked the season, notably because they spend a lot of time on character development and interactions, giving backstory, showing how troubled Raven is as far as the demons inside her and how she's looking for a family, um, Starfire and her trying to figure out what's going on, why she doesn't remember who she is, um, Robin trying to, in the, or the Dick race and Robin um, trying to make a name for himself away from um, Bruce Wayne and Batman, away from Gotham. So he becomes a detective to do just that and help people, but not in the way that Bruce Wayne taught him to, and to kind of show people that there's another way, that they don't have to succumb to the darkness. So all of that was very nicely done. Um, and then I did like that they brought in the Jason Todd Robin, and they had a good compare and contrast between the two Robins as far as their characters, personality, how they're, um, playing or portraying Robin so all in all good stuff there um and I like that they did they held off on bringing in Bratman and Bruce Wayne until the very end of the season as a made as a cliffhanger so um all of that was good um I still haven't quite figured out if the whole dreams or the sequence at the end with um Robin and Batman where Robin kills Batman was a dream sequence or it actually happened um, because I think Batman and Bruce Wayne show up later in the show, I think it was a dream sequence um, for Raven's dad controlling Robin to make him kill him to show that it's possible, I guess, or to show the ultimate darkness inside Batman that now that um, Commissioner Gordon and Alfred are now gone, that there's no um, inhibitor or limitations on Bruce Wayne and Batman to do exactly what he needs to do. And... Um, live to the fullest um, darkness inside of him. So overall, the first season made me want to rewatch or to actually watch the second and third seasons. And I'm actually now kind of curious why they canceled it after the third season. Um, I'm going to look into that a little bit more just to um, see or get the online vibe at least um, to see how or maybe why it was canceled, or maybe it was a budgeting thing, or lack of interest, not enough viewership, or anything like that. Um, part of it just feel like it, I mean, like most shows, it has a slow pickup, but because it's a lot more, it's a lot darker, and it doesn't fo focus on Bruce Wayne, it doesn't focus on Batman, 
and it focuses more on Robin not being Robin, but Dick Grayson trying to make his way away from Batman. Then that's kind of why people were turned off to it. Um, but it's, like with Gotham, for me, I, for the most part, it was good just because it focused on the GCPT. There were that season. There were the seasons in the middle where it felt like it was in a slump. They kept bring, killing characters and bringing them back in a different form to kind of match what happens in comics. But it felt kind of repetitive until the last two seasons where it actually picked back up again and they progressed the story more than um, they were doing so we'll see how that happens here but based on at least the thumbnails on the second season episodes it feels like there are enough characters to make it an interesting show so with that um, I'll round it out with that I give the show right now about a grade of a B it's good enough it's not bad um, or it's not bad by it for sure. So it does, and because it makes me want to continue watching, that's why I'm giving it a grade of a B. It's not necessarily as perfect as it could be. Um, I don't necessarily want to say that it, it should have started with Robin leaving um, Bruce Wayne and becoming a detective, but that could have also potentially made it a little bit better just because. Um, it's one of those things where it would have been nice to have a little bit more set up to um, know what's going on. So we'll see if they fig they do that or they bring more of that up in the rest of the two seasons, um, notably the second and third season. But at this point, it, if it's one of those things where it's too out of order, then that's probably why it didn't do as well. So that's all there is for this review. So with that, I'm going to jump into my... Um, follow-up review of Fast 9, the director's cut. So as we jump into the review for Fast 9, the director's cut, I actually came across it when I was looking for apps to install on my Android device and there was a big thing saying that uh, Fast 9 is available so I was like all right let me take a look and then just poking around I saw that there's a director's cut which adds like like five to ten minutes of um extra footage so i was like you know what might as well give that a watch see how the movie holds up outside of the hype of the film and see if i still enjoy it and see if i still had some of the same thoughts as when i first watched the film and overall i want to say that the, the film was decent um the young character portrayals for dom and jacob didn't bother me as much as when i first saw it although um I kept getting confusing me because the two characters that they had for young Dom and young Jacob felt like they could be inner swapped to the point where I wasn't sure who was who until they brought up their until some other character would bring up their name. So um, that was okay. The whole thing about sending um, Tej and Roman to space in a rocket car or a car with a rocket attached, but in scuba dive scuba diving equipment felt really strange and like a jump the shark moment i mean of all the jump the shark or potential jump the shark moments in the films this one felt like it was the worst out of all of them so that stood out and then for some reason the scene between letty and mia kind of bothered me to the point where it didn't really sell me that they were connecting on this trip to find han it felt like they were acting for the sake of acting um, so a lot of it just felt strange and then of course in general the film feels strange because when you don't have Paul Walker in general it's hard to keep it going or keep the momentum as if or as when he was in the uh, previous films so in general I'd probably give this film I'd probably still keep the film that I'd rate of about a B because we finally see more information as far as um, the race or the racetrack where Dom and Jacob's um, dad died that it was um, Jacob's fault um, but I did like the tying together that Dom g is giving Jacob another chance with a 10 second car so all of that was generally good um, and then it, it, if you've seen any of the rest of the films aside for the whole, from the whole thing with the rocket ship the rest of the film was pretty much about on par for the film franchise from the fourth one on. So I kind of thought that it was still a kind of enjoyable film. Um, I think 
in general, as far as all the films go, um, the whole thing relationship with Tej and Roman is probably my favorite. So um, for me, it's a, kind of hard to say anything bad just because I've now at this point I've now grown up with all the films, so they're not necessarily the best films by any measure. There's in this case, there's less and less, or there's some car racing. They have the whole thing with the magnetism, which I thought was a particularly um, good scene as well. Um, um, I like that they didn't do anything more with the whole plane, um, Jacob's car being picked up by the plane. But then they, of course, take it to the next level by going to space with a car. But um, all in all, I thought it was a decent film. It generally fits with what's going on. Um, so, or what's going on in the franchise, so I can't really fault them for what they're doing. But at this point now, it's going to be how does a film hold up in retrospect with um, whenever um, the next film in the franchise comes out. So that's kind of one of those scenes where all in all the films in the franchise, the previous one feels better than the one that just came out. So by that measure the first one of course is the best and then it kind of doesn't necessarily go downhill but they're now focusing on growing the cast list they're spending more and more time on family which isn't a bad thing but it's kind of setting up the next generation over the course of the franchise so there's that and i like that they're acknowledging all the various things that are happening over the course of the film or the course of the films and making sure they fill in all the various story arcs and retroactively filling in what they need to like with um han's car explosion in tokyo um so like i said if all in all i'd probably still give it a grade of a b i really couldn't tell you which scenes were different um, in the director's cut or which scenes were added because I guess it was more scenes as far as family goes but then it kind of all bleeds together that they're all scenes related to family so I so to differentiate between the director's cut and the original film is not too much different so if you want to save yourself you know whatever it was like eight or nine minutes then go with the theatrical version but if you don't mind the extra length of the film or you just want a complete film, then definitely go with the director's cut. So that's all there is for that particular review. So um, I will say that once Fast 10 or whatever the next uh, version of the film is called, I will watch it to be a completionist. And because, like I said, I've grown up with the films, but I'm not, and I'm anticipating that they're going to continue to do things that are more and more intense and crazy, especially Dom, and then go even next more next level with the family. So, um, in general, that's about all um, there is for this particular review. So, once the next film comes out, whenever it's whenever it is, whether it's 2022 or 2023. Um, that I will uh, watch the film and review it whenever it comes out. So with that, I'm going to jump into my review of, or uh, provide my status update, status and progress update for Knights of the Old Republic 1 for Android. So with the replay that I'm doing of Knights of the Old Republic 1 on Android, I actually started the playthrough prior to the KOTOR remake trailer and announcement by Sony um, just because since I had finished playing um, Doom and Doom 2 and via the uh, mods on Doom that I figured I would try playing KOTOR with a controller notably the Razer Kishi for Android to see if I can play through the game that way see how it holds up in an RPG format and generally also play the game in a different way than I have done um, previously. So in general before for all the non-main character um, characters I would do an auto level up and just use one of those characters as um, passive backup to my main character. But for this playthrough I thought I would um, play the game in a more detailed and granular form where I manually update each character and level them up 
um, manually and use each character more or use the characters more as a team rather than you playing just as my main character and then using the other two if my main character goes down or using them passively. So, so far I have completed the planets of Terrace, Dantooine, and Tatooine along with Yavin Station. So now as far as where I'm at in the game, I'm moving on to Kashyyyk and then moving on to Manan and then Korriban. I think once that happens at some point the Leviathan shows up and then the last level is the Unknown Planet and the Star Forge. But the reason I'm doing it this way is just because I got the main, I got the story arc for um, Mission's brother, Griff. So I was able to finish all of that, and, um, do have a peaceful resolution with the um, Sand People at their enclave, and all of that. So I was originally gonna go to Kashyyyk and take care of that, and try to um, start the story arc for Bastila and her mom on Tatooine. But then I kind of had a memory that Kashyyyk is a little bit longer of a planet than um, Tatooine. Tatooine is long just because there's a lot of wide open spaces, but it is easier as far easier than Kashyyyk. So I thought I would take care of that, get HK47. Um, I don't think I really need him for anything else now that I've used him for his translation uh, with the Sand People. Um, so basically, now that I have the star map for Tatooine, I only really need to go back once I have the Tack Gland for Griff to round out that story arc, and potentially also um, invoke the story arc with Bastila's mom. I think with Jolie Bindo, um, his main story arc is on Manon with his friend in prison, but you don't really need to do much to invoke that as long as he's in your party. Once you're on Manon and you pass by that um, area, then that will start. Um, if my memory serves as far as Karth's side quest goes um, with his son on Korriban, I need to have him in the party um, when I am leaving or when I'm going into the Manan central city or whatever so I could talk to that person. Um, otherwise I think having T3 M4 on the Sith base is important for hacking the computer systems and that sort of stuff. Um, as far as saving Jolie's, Jolie Bindo's friend, I think I always just generally remember that it being a pain to um, figure out how to um, save him so i'm not really concerned about saving him or not i'm gonna do as much as i can on the light side in order to um do that so make sure i talk to the right people in the hotel i think there's something about it as reading online that's something with the computer system at the republic station so um there's that. I think that really rounds out the bulk of it. I think there's something with Candorous and something about reliving it from the past during the Mandalorian Wars. But because it's all side quests, I don't remember them there being much to do. They, they don't really have much to do with the main story arc. Um, I think Candorous' side quest and Karth's side quest... I mean, in general, like I said, they don't have much to do with the overall plot, but theirs are the weirdest and hardest to get, I guess. Um, so I'm not really worried about initiating any of the side quests. So if they happen, they happen. And I will try and at least invoke them like by talking to each of those side characters, taking them where I need to and, and all of that. But I'm not outwardly looking to um, initiate those side quests. I really mainly just want to make sure I play the game in full with the Kishi to see how it holds up um, and then also update all the characters manually. So those are the main concerns. Um, but then as it relates to the KOTOR remake, so I don't didn't see um, a release date for when the game is going to come out. So I know I sh I'm hope or um, at the moment there should be um, enough time to finish playing the game before it's released. So I basically playing the game now is going to give me another bit of refresher as far as how the, the original game was 
and then playing the new version of the game, the remake, to see how that compares and contrasts. If they update the visuals or the storyline, maybe make it a little bit less cheesy, or how they, or maybe if they just improve it based on modern graphics and sensibilities to see how that changes it. But I'm going to try and keep an open mind to to do less of a comparison between the original version and the remake but i will do a compare and contrast um just to see how the two are similar and different so um there will be a link in the show notes for the, or there is a show link in the show notes for the playlist i've set up for this particular gameplay um uh, of kotor um it should show also show up on the youtube channel at youtube.com slash patel n01 and i've also set up a uh, pinned tweet on the Twitter account at Patel N01. So if you want a quick access to the link, you can find it there. Um, as I upload videos, I try and upload a video approximately every day or so with about an hour to an hour and a half of gameplay, unless, unless there's a little bit less gameplay, but um, in general, about the same amount every day. Um, I have completed the Yavin Station. Um, Part where I do need to play with the roadie, play Pazak with the roadie and beat him 10 times in order to get the discount. So as I visit, as I complete each planet, I'm going to visit him to sell off any product that I don't need to get as much back as possible and then also check out new inventory. So ultimately, by the time I'm done with the Trandoshans, that I can buy some of the Rodian's more tentative stuff or more testing products that he's been working on so I can get the two higher powered lightsaber crystals. Um, I am working on doing a dual lightsaber um, fighting upgrade so I have a lightsaber in each hand so that way I can um, I'm all set Why by the time I get both crystals and I have um, that ready to go and then I'm gonna upgrade them as I go to make sure I have the strongest possible lightsabers. Um, I think otherwise I just really need to work on upgrading, I guess, gearhead maybe and implants and that sort of stuff, but I'm mostly f focusing on healing and persuade right now so I can um, have that going and um, take it from there. So that's all there is for this particular review. So if you have any questions, comments, feedback, um, input on playing the game and that sort of stuff, you can comment on this post on Twitter, as I mentioned, at PatelN01. If you want an ad-free um, version of the show or you want bonus content and periodic update with, updates with what's going on with the show, then you can find me on Patreon at patreon.com slash PatelN01. But the, and then of course the website with all the links and past ep links to past episodes, subscription links, and all of that good stuff can be found at headphonesdale.reviews. But thanks for tuning into this particular episode, and until.